Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Have you ever thought about being an inventor? I'm sure you have. Well, this story is about a young fellow about your age whose father's an inventor of secret timing devices for delayed action bombs. Only young Jim Devers gets himself involved with one of these bombs. And that brings us to the name of our story, Boy and a Bomb. Jim, will you stop messing around with my tools? Some of them cost a lot of money. That one you've got there in your hand, it's made especially for this work. Now put it down. Aw, oh, Dad, when are you going to quit working on this thing? Not now, son. Your dad has some important work to do for Uncle Sam. Maybe after I finish this invention, we can go, well, go fishing or something. That's what you always say, Dad. Maybe after this one, maybe after the next one. But you never do. Maybe we can get together next week sometime. Um, Here's a dollar. Go amuse yourself. I'm busy. I don't want your old money. You're always too busy. I might just as well not be around at all. Sure, sure, some other time. This is important work for the Army. Very important. Yeah, sure. Everything's important. But me... Morning. Are you Bill Jefferson, forest ranger? Yes, I am. My name's Murdoch Fremont, special courier for the United States government. My credentials, sir. Oh. Uh, have a seat, won't you? Thank you, sir, but I won't be staying. Mm-hmm. Your credentials are in order, Mr. Fremont. Now then, what's the nature of your business? Mr. Jefferson, in this sealed packet are secret orders for you to open after I leave. Thank you, and good day, sir. Hey, what a cool character he is. Ah, tough paper and tape. Yeah, I'll say so. That does it. Well, there it is, fellas. <laughs> Take a look. Simple as ABC. Huh. Is that all they want? Why send courier with this? There's only one answer. Must be more important than we realize, Graywell. <laughs> all we have to do is escort Hal Devers out to the Army Proven Ground with his new invention and bring him back to his factory again. <laughs> Easy as falling off a log. Don't say that too quickly, Stumpy. These easy assignments sometimes turn out to be mighty rugged. I wonder what this thing is that Pop's working on. Hmm, looks kind of complicated. What's this thing for? Jim, what are you doing with that timer? Oh, Dad! Oh, I almost dropped Jim, it. Jim, if you drop that, I'll tan your hide. Now put it down. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Is, is it another timing device? Yes, it is. And if I'm any prophet, it's the best thing your dad has done yet. Oh, can, can I stay and watch you work on it, Dad? No, I don't want you bothering me. This work's too important to be having interruptions. Okay. Devers 
Sears has here. You never know that this was the reception room of a factory. You think we're standing in six inches of soft velvet. Well, modern factories today are nice to work in, fellas. Yeah, I wonder where Deaver's secretary or receptionist is. Oh, well, we can wait here. Somebody should be out in a minute or two. I said no, Jim. I'm not going to any fathers and sons banquet. There are things far more important on my mind. <laughs> Looks like we're barged into a family argument. Okay, Dad. Bye. Oh, oh excuse me. Dad, some men out here to see you. My dad will be out in a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, who's that, Bill? Uh, young Jim Deavers. The old man must have really blew a fuse. You could hear him right through these here thick walls. Yeah, that's right, old timer. Deavers must have been pretty angry. Well, I've heard that the old man doesn't spend much time with his boy. And since the mother died, young Jim has been pretty lonely. I'd thank you to mind your own business, Mr. Bill Jefferson. Hmm? What I do about my family is my affair. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I certainly didn't intend you to hear my remarks. After I'll thank you to mind your own business. By the way, what do you want? Well, we've been ordered here by the United States government, Mr. Deavers, to escort you to the proving grounds to test out your new timing device for a delayed action bomb. Huh? Oh, uh, yes, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, well, uh, the test isn't until Wednesday morning, is it? That's right, Mr. Deavers. But uh, in following through, I thought we might want to make a few last-minute plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Well, perhaps you're right. Uh, suppose you gentlemen step into my private office. Thank you. Now, if you'll sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, this gadget that I've developed may revolutionize completely the manufacture of delayed bombs. In fact, I've got one all rigged up right here on my desk. It's the one I'm going to use in the test. Now, the bomb's perfectly harmless now, of course. Mm -hmm. I see you have it already in its ordnance casing. Yes, supplied by the Army. How powerful is this here contraption, Mr. Deavers? Contraption? You mean... I mean, is it... Death dealing tin can here on the table. Uh, this here, uh, what'd you call it? A uh, straight action or something or other? Oh, you mean the bomb? Well, sir, this bomb could destroy the whole city of Naughty Pine. All by itself? <laughs> Quit pulling my leg there, Mr. Deavers. Why, this thing ain't no bigger than a sack of potatoes. Neither some atomic bombs, my friend. <laughs> Shades of Aaron Sod. I've been pounding me beat for 30 years, but I've never seen a night as dull as this one. O'Rourke, you'll have to be talking to the sergeant and get your beat changed back to the river area again. I say, are me peepers failing me, or do I see a wee spit of a lad wending his way toward me? Now, what in the name of common sense do you suppose he's wandering around at this hour for? You say there, young fella. Where do you think you're gone at this time of the evening? Time for lads your age to be pounding their ear. Oh. Hello, Officer O'Rourke. It's me, Jim Deavers. Oh, great day in the evening. And now, what are you doing out all by yourself at this time of night for, Jimmy? Oh, just walking. Well, now, what's the trouble? Have you something on your mind? Oh, it's really nothing. Oh, now, listen to me, Jimmy. It lets you and me sit down here on this doorstep a while, eh? Huh? I suppose you tell Patty O'Rourke all about your troubles. And the back of me hand to you if you try to fool me. Remember, I've five wee boys of me own to try to keep going on the straight and narrow. Oh, thanks, Mr. O'Rourke. You make me feel better already. But why should I cry on your shoulder? You got real worries to think about. Ah, uh, Jamie boy. Patty O'Rourke is the strong arm of the law. And what's more, I'm supposed to help people out of trouble. Now, spill it to Patty, me lad. Spill it. Well, it's about my dad. Uh, I figured as much. <laughs> Go on, Jimmy, boy. You see, my dad's a real intelligent guy. A genius is what I've heard him call. But somehow he's never got time.
Pat! A pal, over here! Well, top of the morning to you, Bill Jefferson. Yeah, and the rest of the day to myself, I always say. <laughs> Good morning, Pat. Uh, always the same. I thank you, me boy. <laughs> but I have a heavy heart this fine morning. Oh, no. What's up, Pat? Uh, did you have to pinch somebody last night? Oh, something worse. I found out about a father who's going to lose the love of his young boy if he ain't careful. You wouldn't mean all man Davers, would you? Well, if I don't turn in me badge and retire... You took the words right out of me mouth. How did you know? Well, I've been involved with Jimmy's dad, and I overheard a bit of loud roaring the other evening on the part of Davers himself, and with you knowing the boy ever since he was going to kindergarten, well, I just put two and two together. Well, uh, what do you think about all this, Bill? Well, Pat, it's hard to know the answer. You just have to wait and see what happens. Aye, but let's not wait so long that it's the wrong thing. <laughs> Davers? Oh, uh, hello, Bill. What are you working on now? Another idea? Yes. Just got a brainstorm while I was completing the final details on this bomb we're going to test tomorrow morning. I see. Um, well, I, uh, that is, uh, do you have a minute of spare time, Mr. Davers? Huh? Oh, uh, spare time? Important? I think it is. It's about your son. Who, Jim? Oh, he's all right. He'll get along. Don't worry. Don't worry? Do you know Jim was seen walking around the streets late last night? Yeah, well, he's done that before. Now, be quiet for a minute while I gauge this reading. This this is very important. Davers, are you a human being or just a mechanical man? Huh? Oh, what do you mean? Don't you care whether your son is up at all hours of the night? Don't you realize you've got to be both father and mother to that boy? Right now, you're neither one. You ought to be ashamed. What? What are you talking about, Ranger? Ashamed of what? You mean you haven't even heard what I've been trying to tell you for the last few minutes? Come on, wake up. Start thinking about something else and delayed action bombs. Maybe God will take away that fine young lad of yours. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Devers. I thought you were in the lab. I didn't mean to bother you. It's quite all right, Bob. I'm leaving shortly. Right now, in fact. Yes, sir. Well, I'll let you out by the front door. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, here's the special bomb we're going to test tomorrow. Keep a sharp eye open for prowlers. If that thing ever came alive, it could blow this whole town off a map. So I understand, sir. I'll watch it closely. Very well. Good night, Bob. Good night, sir. Hello, son. Going out again this evening? Yeah, going to see somebody. Is it okay? Well, um, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, something that, uh... Oh, well, it can wait. Well, okay, Dad. See you later. <sighs> I'm glad the boy's gotten over this silly idea about my spending a lot of time with him. I've just got too much work to do. Important work. What do you want, young fella? Oh, it's you, Jim. Yeah, let me in, will you, Bob? I want to get my dad's bowling ball out of his office. Okay, Jim, come on in. Now, you go ahead and get the ball, and I'll meet you back here shortly. I've got to make my rounds, or I'll have every cop in the city here in two minutes. Oh, that's all right, Bob. I can let myself out. Okay, that'll be fine. Now, be sure you slam the door. <laughs> Jim would be gone by now. There's still a light in his dad's office. 
I better look in and see what the youngster's doing. He might take a notion to fool with that bomb. Great Scott, the bomb's gone. Why, young Jim Devers must have taken it. Is that you, Mr. Devers? Yes, who else would be here at this time of night? Who's calling? Bob Sellers, guard at the plant, sir. Yes, well, go ahead. What's wrong? It's the bomb, sir. It's gone. It, it's been taken from your office. What? What are you there for, you idiot? Who took it in house? Speak up, man. I'm sorry, sir, but it's your son, Jim. What? Well, this is no time for joking, man. What's the story? He duped me into it, sir. He said he wanted a bowling ball out of your office. But he's got the bomb. I'm sure of that. Well, you'd better be sure. You'll be fired. I'll be right out there, just as soon as I call the Rangers. I hope I can get Bud out of his bed without his folks hearing me throw these pebbles against his window... Oh, come on, bud, open up. Is that you, Jim? Hey, what do you want? Hey, what you got in the bag? Come on down. I got something real hot to show you. Hurry up, though. Okay, okay, go around to my dad's shop on top of the garage, and I'll be right down. Okay. Okay, okay. Rangers now. I sure hope Bill has an answer to this thing. We're in a spot. Davers, what's this all about? What's wrong? Bob Sellers swears my son Jim came into my office and took the bomb somewhere. Where we don't know. Are you certain? Yes, he pulled a fast one on the guard and got into the office and just about an hour ago let himself out of the building while the guard was making his rounds. Is the bomb activated easily? Well, uh, there's a turnkey which must be removed, and then this starts a chemical reaction which in turn eventually sets off another device made of a rare metal. Uh -huh. When the generated heat made by the chemical reaction is high enough, it suddenly expands this metal trigger. Uh. And that'll be the end. The end of everything. Bill, if that thing blows up, the whole town of Naughty Pine will go with it. Devers, you go in and call the sheriff and the state troopers... And get them here at once. I'll radio Ranger headquarters and start my men searching different areas. Okay, I'll, I'll do anything you say. One more thing. Yes? What's that, Bill? How long do we have before this thing breaks loose? Two hours from the time the turnkey is removed and, and the bomb is activated. Whew. If we get to the bomb before the two hours are up, how can we stop it? By jamming the timing mechanism. Then it'll have to be defused with special tools and instruments. Okay. Now the big question is... Has the bomb been activated already? Oh, I, I don't know, Bill. But that's what's got me worried to death. That kid takes after me, and he's probably trying to take it apart. You say the bomb's been missing a little over an hour. That's right. 63 minutes, to be exact. All right. Say it took 15 minutes for Jim to get someplace where he could start working on it. That would mean it's been going 48 minutes. How much time do we have left? An hour and 12 minutes. An hour and 12 minutes. All right, let's swing into action and find that boy and that bomb. Say, Bud, did you notice this bomb started to get warm when we turned that key? No, it's beginning to get hot. Ouch. Oh, I'll say it is. Say, we, we better do something or, or something might happen. I know it. But what should we do? I saw my dad put this thing together once, but... Hmm. Let's try taking out some of these screws. We've got to stop it somehow. Yeah, it looks, looks to me like it's going. Car 10 calling Ranger Bell. Car 10 reporting in. Still looking carefully in the old warehouse district. Found nothing yet. Over. 
Okay, car 10. Keep looking, boys, and keep looking hard. Over and out. State Patrol Car 21, report in, please. State Patrol Car 21, report in, please. We haven't heard from you for five minutes. Report in. Over. Hold on a minute, Bill. We think we've seen something. The boy just turned around the corner carrying a bag of some kind. I'll let you know in a minute. Over. Oh, I hope this is it. I hope that boy they saw is Jim and he has the bomb. I don't like to rub salt in an open wound, Devers, but which do you think is more important now, a little gem or the secret mechanism for a delayed-action bomb? Oh, don't ask me, Bill. I was crazy. I, I see it now. It... Shh, wait a minute. Here's their report. Sorry, Bill. That wasn't the right boy, and he wasn't carrying a bowling bag. Yeah, but we'll keep looking over and out. Okay, fellas, keep trying. Five-minute reports for now, Mr. Devers. Yeah, it looks hopeless. I'd give all my money, reputation, mechanical genius, and, and ability to, to have my son safely in my arms right now. I've been blind, a, a stone-blind fool. That's what I've been waiting to hear from you. Now you give me hope. And I've got an idea that might work. What is it, Bill? No time to explain now. You stay by that radio. Don't leave it for a second. We've only got 20 minutes unless my idea works. Hey, O'Rourke! Patty O'Rourke! Hey, it's a midnight. Have you found Jamie Boy No, yet? that's why I'm here. Pat... You didn't see the boy tonight, did you? Say, now, do you think I'm as blind as a bat? If I'd seen him, I'd have bellowed like a, like a bull of Bashan. Pat, think hard on this question. Does Jimmy have a friend anywhere? You know, a close buddy that he might have gone with? Say, you must be a mind reader. That's his name. Whose name? What? His pal's name is Buddy. Sure, and he lives on the southeast corner of Green and Maple. Thanks, Pat. That's the answer I want. <laughs> to make it across town. I've got to. Come on, car, let's go. Corner of Green and Maple. I hope Jimmy's here. Come on, open the door. What's the idea of waking a person up in the middle of the night? Where's your son? What? In his room, asleep. Where else? Let's take a look. Where's his bedroom? Oh, upstairs in the back. But he's sleeping, I tell you. Yeah? I'm going to find out. Excuse me, please. Hey, you can't barge in my home without... A... Who do you think you are, anyway? I'll explain that later. Your son isn't here. What? There's a light in the window on top of your garage. What's in there? What? My workshop. Bud's in there, all right. I can see him through the window. And there's someone in there with him. Young Jim Devers. They got a red-hot bomb ready to go off. Call Mr. Devers and tell him we found the bomb, and I'm waiting for his instructions as to how to jam it. Oh, a ranger. Jimmy, boy, am I glad to see you. Uh, 
This is the bomb, isn't it, son? Yeah, that's it. We started to take it apart. Is it going to blow up, Bill? I hope not. As soon as your dad calls on the phone, we'll try to stop this thing. I, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Honest, I didn't. I know you didn't. We'll get this thing all straightened out. Just... That, there's your dad now. It's a good thing Bud's dad has his extension in his workshop. Jim, you hold the phone against my ear so I can use both hands and pray like you never prayed before. Okay. Uh, Devers, I've got the bomb right here. How do I jam the timing device? Oh, thank God you found it, Bill. Does Jim have the casing off yet? Well, some of it. Well, pull the whole outer casing off, Bill. All right. Let's see here. Yeah. 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 It's coming off. Yeah. <coughs> There, there's a, a metal soundproofing sleeve with three small screws in it. Yeah? Take the screws out so you can slide the sleeve back. Okay. There's one of them. Two of them. Three of them. All right. All set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, the, the ticking sound. Is that... That's what we're after, Bill. Is there a metal wedge at hand? Uh, you got a metal wedge there, Jim? Yeah, uh, here. Got it, Mr. Devers. <laughs> now, now the timing device is in between the chemical chamber and the explosive. You've got to drive that wedge in there and stop that ticking. How hard can I hit the wedge? All you've got. Start driving, man. There's no time to waste. Right. Still hear the ticking, Bill. Hit it harder. Okay. I, I can't seem to get the wedge in there, Mr. Devers. The opening's too small. You've got to. Give it all you've got. This has to do it, Bill. You've got only a minute left. All right. This time I'll drive it in or else. That did it. The timing device is jammed and we're safe. Monsters diffused. Boy, I never want to spend a couple hours like this again. <laughs> You're not the only one. But everything's worked out all right. That's the main thing. Thanks to you, Bill. Well, that's all right. I'm glad Pat O'Rourke remembered Jim's friend. Jim? Yeah, Dad? What do you say that you and I go on a fishing trip? Oh, boy, Dad. That'd be swell. <laughs> Well, that's today's story, boys and girls. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Boys and girls, this is Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then.